All right, this next guy joined Supernatural this season as the half angel, half human you've come to love, Alexander Calvert. All right, we're gonna see how far I get on this next one. His Disney princess hair gives him extra padding. Jared Padalecki! All right, all he needs in life is bullets, bacon, and booze. Jensen Ackles. Next up, we have the most recent person to cheat death, and he's a real trench coat enthusiast, Misha Collins. One of the men behind it all, executive producer Andrew Dabb. And last but not least, a man whose name you might recognize, executive producer Robert Singer. Okay, you all might like realize that Mark Pellegrino is not on this stage. Someone had to keep shooting the show. He's holding the fort down. He sends his love. Um, all right, Scooby Natural. It just happened. Who just watched it for the first time? All right, what are reactions? Was it what you expected? I didn't see anybody in the audience raise their hands when she said, who saw this for the first time? Oh, yeah. Which means you're all suspect. <laughs> what do we think? Um, I, I mean, I think that we, we've all been sort of cognizant of the fact that Supernatural was snubbed for the Oscars. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> so I, I feel like we're getting our comeuppance right now. Sure. Yeah. By being on the same stage? <laughs> There was a lot of I think there was a lot of nerding out for me. That was really awesome. Should we just do that for an hour? How awesome was How that? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm slow on the uptake. I think I'm still sort of processing. Um, sort of surreal. I mean, not sort of, very surreal. <laughs> How cool. Ah, very excited. In terms of making that episode, were you all, were you in the booth alone? Were like the three of you together? Did you meet any of the other people? We, uh, the three of us got in the booth together, uh, which there was a lot of cameras, so I assume you will, of it. you will we'll see, see that on the, on the, the extra special features. Sure. Um, <laughs> and it was something that I don't think I've, I've never done. I, I've done voiceover work before, but it has always been solo. Uh, so to have the other guys there, we could work off that energy, and, and it just, it was something that was pretty unique. I've, I've never experienced it, and I think you could probably tell because the, the excitement and the speed in which we were speaking was so different than <laughs> normal speak because we were so excited about it. Uh, it was, uh, and we did that over, what, a year ago? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. It. yeah. Was it? So we recorded it all about a year ago, uh, and uh, that's that's how long it takes to put one of those episodes together. So it's uh, it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think we were all kind of giddy from the moment we read the Super script. Giddy, yeah. It was just like, are you kidding me? This is so brilliant. It's so <laughs> so brilliant. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're all super excited. <laughs> what was the genesis of the idea? What, like, where, what did, did you guys, who, where did that come from? Sure, so one of the writers of the show, Jeremy Adams, who I've known for a long time and has written a lot for Warner Bros. Animation, calls me probably November 2016. He's like, has anybody ever thought about doing a Supernatural Scooby-Doo crossover? 
I was like, why has anybody thought of that? Because the answer is no. So obvious. Um, so obvious. <laughs> um, we had talked in previous years, like Eric Kripke, Ben Edlund, I remember being in a room with them. They're like, could we put an animated element in it? Could we do like a Roger Rabbit thing? Mm -hmm. The animation's really hard to do, and obviously, as these guys just said, it takes a lot of time. And I kept saying no. Right? And, then, yeah, and, and Bob was like, never. I'll never direct that episode, I'll tell you that much. Um, but, you know, we were like, that's a really great idea. We, Warner Brothers Animation, to their great credit, was always behind it. Warner Brothers Television was up behind it. And then we got very fortunate in the last year, we got our pickup very early in January. So we were able to start almost immediately and get the script written and get these guys recorded. Uh, we saw an animatic in April. They started animating in July. And I think we saw final animation in January. Oh my gosh. Did you have any major changes? No. <laughs> those guys know what they're doing. Like, those guys know what they're doing. You know what yeah. I mean? They're they're professionals and they're awesome. And everything we gave them, they made a lot better and a lot gorier. Sure. You know, you write seize a, de <laughs> seize a dead body, and now you got somebody hanging with like a stump, and it's you know, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, I feel like you told me you all had to basically just cut stuff because there was so much good stuff, and that was kind of the only change. Yeah, I mean, was, uh, in, in the cutting room, it's interesting because you get the uh, you, you get the animation, but you can't like you do when you shoot film, you can't go, you know, we should cut to a close-up here because what they give you, <laughs> that's what you have. Um, so it was heads and tails. Uh, there's one a whole scene that we, we cut out for length um, that I think you're probably able to see on the DVD extras. Was it the restaurant scene? Yes, it was the... Yeah. <gasps> yes. So that was animated? Because I was wondering... Yeah, it was, get, you had a, yeah, they did it. And it was very cute, but it, you know, it didn't really... Um, and it was a, what is this restaurant? It was a Misha scene, and we figured that was losable. So, <laughs> you, know, um, you know. Just disposable. We from the chaff, you yeah. know what I mean? Right. The way it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> was it was it just your shot of getting out of this building alive today? <laughs> it's, gone, it's gone way down now. Was it just Castiel in that scene? Uh, Castiel and Sh Scooby Shabby. Shaggy. Shabby is a, Shaggy is a waiter, I think. Yes, they play waiters at a French restaurant who unfortunately serve the phantom salt, and that is not good for ghosts. Uh, oh, that's fun. Hopefully, we get to see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry, Misha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, I want to talk also just generally about season 13. Obviously, the other kind of big thing that you all have done is bring in alternate realities, other worlds, all these things. What was the genesis of the idea for another world? Was there a like, specific inspiration for that? Um, yeah, it was something that uh, Brad and Eugenie pitched last season uh, as something to kind of explore and then, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no big deal. And then we, um, we, so the Wayward Sisters pilot, which we did this year, we actually wrote a version of it <laughs> last year. And uh, we stole that idea for Wayward Sisters. And then when that did not go forward, we stole it back for Supernatural. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that ended up being Apocalypse World and everything you've seen this year. Sure. So maybe I should throw it to Brad and Eugenie. Where did that idea come from? Well, it was something we hadn't really seen the show do before, and the more we talked about it, about having an alternate version of this world, I mean, it itself became its own monster. And so it, that was really exciting to us, for them to put our characters into a completely different world with a, no set of reality that was even remotely uh, familiar to them, we were, and keep everybody off balance. We were playing with the idea of having our hunters be the hunted, and... Mm. Um, and as Brad said, just turning the world upside down and, and all kinds of evil and good and, and realities being morphed into something they had, we'd never seen before. So that was just the genesis of it, which is a way a lot of our stories start, you know, where someone just comes in and says, what if? And then someone says, well, that's a crazy idea. And someone says, no, I think it's a really good idea. And then it just turns into a, a season. And then the idea started <laughs> growing about having doppelgangers in this other world of people that we are familiar with from the show have their doubles in this opposite world who knew nothing about, obviously, the characters on Earth. So it, uh, you know, it just started spiraling out, wildly out, out of control. control. <laughs> and now it's on television. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, I am so interested. You mentioned the doppelgangers. In terms of writing these characters, they're characters we do know, but they're also not. It's a very different version of a character. 
what are the conversations in the writer's room of like, oh, it's Kevin, so we got to make him like this, but wait, it's not our Kevin. Like, how do you guys find that balance as writers? I think the idea is they're still the same people. They just haven't been through the same experiences. The only difference, as we've stated on the show, between Apocalypse World and our world is this is the world Sam and Dean were never born into. So this is what the world looks like if Sam and Dean aren't born. But Bobby's still Bobby and Kevin's still Kevin. They haven't met our guys, but they're still the same people. So you want to you know, treat them with, with the respect you would show the same people. Sure. <laughs> I thought something was going to happen. Jared? A, a question just occurred to me that I don't know if I'm allowed to ask of y'all. Ask it. Yes, you can go to the restroom. Well, you're just amongst friends. So. Yes. May I use the bathroom? Uh, is there an apocalypse world Sam Winchester? <laughs> no. 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 Just, we just, we just, no. We literally just said that oh. these are the worlds that the brothers were not born into. <laughs> <laughs> a playback doesn't have to go back more than 15 seconds. <laughs> I couldn't hear it. I was like, they're saying something. I can't. <laughs> yeah, no, there's is no there... Winchesters in these alternate worlds. So wait, I have a question. Is there, is there an apocalypse world? <laughs> okay, fine. I accept Where are we? Is there, an, is there an apocalypse world Dean Winchester? <laughs> No. Take it Obviously off. not. There's <laughs> monsters. That's right. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Jared plays the smart one. Yeah. <laughs> plays. <laughs> Pretends. <laughs> In the animated side. <laughs> Well, outside of Apocalypse World, we've seen the bad place. We kind of got a glimpse that there are obviously many other places just in the universe. Is that something that you all would like to explore, like other alternate realities? <laughs> Good answer. Um, in. This is all part of our plan to morph this show slowly into sliders. <laughs> so, uh, yes. No, I think we've, we've played a lot on Apocalypse World. I don't know that we're going to be going to a new alternate reality every every week, but if there are more stories to tell, we go where the stories are. Sure. I feel like there has to be like an uplifting alternate reality. We're no. like, <laughs> no. Not on this show. <laughs> no, not on this show. <laughs> no, nothing but bad places. Um, I want to touch on something you guys introduced this season, which was the big empty, which Misha. <laughs> Misha. Wow. <laughs> All right. The empty. That was the Misha, will you tell your wife to quiet down? <laughs> Misha, it led to you playing opposite you, one of you with an accent. Yep. yep. You know what? I have to say, yeah, it was nice was to accent? finally be working in a scene with a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who just shows up, knowing their lines, Where not, was that? not fondling you below the waist. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the professional from? I couldn't place it. <laughs> he was from the Mid-Atlantic. Um, he was born on an oil rig in the Mid-Atlantic. I thought that. Yeah. I thought so. I, I couldn't it's place an it. unusual accent. It's a dialect yeah. we're not familiar with. When we first saw Dahlia's of, uh, of Misha being this uh, alternate Misha, uh, Andrew and I kind of looked at each other and go, what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it grows on you. I nailed it. That's you what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the but idea. Bob, to be fair, that's your reaction to most dailies that you see. <laughs> <laughs> that's just your reaction. I love the idea that Misha got a script and it's just like normal guy and he just like went ham. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, the process of shooting that scene, though? I mean, obviously, it took a lot of time. Um, it, it, actually, that was all, the, all, the, uh, the empty was one day, really, of shooting, okay. and, but it was an intense day, um, and it was, kind of, it, it was kind of interesting because I brought my wife to set that day. Um, 
to actually with with a purpose and the purpose was to show her because we've been working on these projects together and the purpose was to show her like this is what a well-oiled machine looks like. <laughs> like everybody knows what their job is everybody knows the equipment they're working with and uh, it was a, a complete and utter cluster F um, <laughs> Everybody was sort of powwowing after each take, like, oh, how do, I'm like, oh, how does this work? Uh, and then, and then, <laughs> what is this accent he's what doing? Is that, <laughs> his accent is killing us. And then uh, the director kept being like, uh, you know what? I think uh, Misha, you know what? We'll try another one, um, but uh, switch characters. Um, <laughs> And so I was going back and forth. Um, it was, it, it felt mm. like it was really kind of an experiment. And I, and I think we sort of figured it out. The accent never found its way, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was an interesting day on the set and, and kind of unique. Yeah. And now here we are at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> How many bloopers are there of Castiel with an accent? None. Zero. Really? No I don't. I don't. I will not that. sign off on those papers. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, another. Oh, <laughs> no. It's gone. No, it's gone. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, I actually had electroshock therapy to, to take that out of my head, so I, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Is the Big Empty a concept or a place that like, we want to visit again? Was that kind of a one and done situation? We might visit it next year. It, okay. Uh, we're talking about it. Sure. Next year? <laughs> Uh, not, not on this show. No, no, no. <laughs> no. We're all going to charm, guys. It's going to be great. <laughs> well, another new element, it's a character, not an element, this year is obviously Alexander S. Jack. <laughs> what has this experience, was it what you expected? Uh, in one word, traumatizing. Uh, <laughs> No, it's been it's been great. Yeah, uh, getting to work with these. <laughs> he doesn't believe me. That's fine. Uh, I like going to work, minus minus you know some of the other extra stuff. <laughs> well, to be fair, you were basically naked for like the first three episodes. I really was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Showing. That's, that's traumatizing for all of us. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Showing up on set was definitely nerve wracking with no wardrobe. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll just stand in front of them. Hopefully they don't laugh or anything, you know. No, no it's been good. <laughs> that's probably pretty nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you, Alexander. I'm naked. Yeah. <laughs> go Here sit you go. in that corner, please. <laughs> Great. And it's red. There's not a lot of nudity on Supernatural, so you should feel special. Yeah. Mm. I, I guess I do out. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for Andrew and Bob, in terms of casting Jack, what was it about Alexander that stood out? The naked. All right. Song. All right. <laughs> Like to tell them? <laughs> Would you like to rephrase the question? Uh, you know, not really. I <laughs> don't know how to go about. Uh, what was it about his uh, acting ability? Oh, there okay. you go. Oh, uh, we, we saw a lot of people for this part. Um, knew it was going to be a, a season long and maybe more uh, part. Um, I think when we saw Alex's uh, audition, at least internally, um, we said that's that's the guy. Um, when you cast these things, you know, the network certainly has their uh, input. Input. Um, but I think we were, um, I think Andrew and I were, uh, you know, 
we, we sort of put our foot down as much as we could and we said, this, this is the kid, and uh, he hasn't disappointed once. And just so you know... Yeah. As, as good as he is in the part, every time he has a scene with Jared, he has to put up with so much crap. <laughs> it's, been, it's been the ultimate Which is, test, which is good for Misha, because Misha isn't the butt of it. <laughs> no. But he hangs in there like grim death, so if you love his acting, it's even better than you think. <laughs> yeah. these, are the, these are the takes they can use. I, yeah. I, still, no? yeah. I still love the uh, Misha found a friend. <laughs> we could... We could write a book together. It would be um, acting under duress. Yes. <laughs> it's called, what do you call it? Obstacle acting? Obstacle, Obstacle acting. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to navigate your way. Obstacle course. True, true story. One of our directors, Nina, uh, who we love and adore, uh, was shooting Alex's close-up. And... In Tombstone, yeah. And the... We'll call it light hazing. Uh, <laughs> got, got so bad That's that she... That's what my lawyer's calling it, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it got so bad that she said, "All right, forget it." He couldn't get he couldn't get through a take because we wouldn't let him. And uh, <laughs> and so she said, "All right, forget it. Swing the cameras up to the guys, get their close-ups, and shoot them out, and get them off my set." <laughs> So that we can go back and shoot Alex's close up without them here. Well, I love Alex's reaction because he had done like one or two or three takes, and he's like, "That's it. That's it. That's." They're, they're, they're oh yeah, gonna, she didn't tell him but what the plan was. She was like, "All right, we're done with that. Let's go yeah. up to the boys." And he's just like, "I was laughing through every take." <laughs> and we're like, like "This is not a good take. Yeah. There's no. There's nothing they can use." And so they move on to us and film us out, and Alex is like, "My God, I didn't even really get a close up because they were messing with me." And so we finish our close-ups, and it's like, okay, it's a wrap on Jensen and Jared. Okay, put the cameras back on Alex now. And he's like, oh, I do get a close-up. They're just in the close -up. <laughs> Only Misha and Alex have ever kicked us off our own set. Uh, <laughs> bravo. <laughs> when you guys are casting a character like this that you know is going to be like, so close to Sam and Dean, is there any sort of like chemistry read, or is it just like... Go meet Good Jordan. luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, called, it's called the first episode. Yeah. Rehearsal. So you just throw them in there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that one of the things that um, Alex, just to be serious, that Alex has is that he ha he's a complicated character who's half human with the potential for good and half Lucifer, who is sort of the definitive bad. And so you, when you see him on screen, at least in the audition he had, a, and he's only lived up to that, a real dangerous quality, and you don't know which way he's going to go. There's a striving for good, there's a striving for redemption, and a lot of the characters try to find their own personal redemption through him. Um, and, you know, none of that is, is articulated in language, but you can just see it sort of play across his face, that he is torn between two sides of the human condition, you know, nature versus nurture, and who will he emerge as? And, and he can do that without saying a lot of words. And that, I think, was a real intangible that no one could plan on asking for in an audition. But he just delivered. Mm. His, uh, he, he showed up. <laughs> Alex showed up in the, 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 the last episode of uh, last season. And really, there was one shot of him. And uh, I was directing the episode, and it was just kind of a push in onto his uh, face, and he was sort of dimly lit. And right, I mean, take one. I mean, the camera moved in, and I just saw that face and what he was doing, not saying a word. And I remember thinking to myself, this is so going to work next year, you know? <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank Chuck. Thank, Thank Chuck. Chuck, yeah. Shout out, Chuck. <laughs> All right. Thank Grandpa, I guess, for you. Right. I got a lot of complicated <laughs> family history. At this point. <laughs> you, have you done your 23 and Me for Jack yet? <laughs> it's uh, also a lot of people theorizing that something happened to my mom and Misha is like some serious speculation. Don't go down that rabbit hole. I can't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> So, 
That's a guilty look. Uh, 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 yeah, sorry. <laughs> We're gonna keep moving. Um, I wanna talk about Sam because apparently... <laughs> The fandom seems very concerned about Sam. If I'm like, hey, what do you guys want to know? It's like, is Sam okay? What's happening with Sam? Yeah. Is Sam okay? What's happening with Sam? <laughs> uh, Sam is okay. I, I, know, I know the last time we saw Sam, um, he and his brother had sort of had a conversation about, uh, and, and I love what the writers, I had a question earlier today about, hey, you know, y'all are probably, the only actors on a 13 season show and the only actors who haven't become producers after 10 years. Why not? And I was like, you know what? I, I think Jensen and I both, it's a mutual, I, I wouldn't want to do what uh, these four folks and the rest of our writers and producers do. I would not be good at it. Um, they, uh, it, I think it's a mutual respect. I know that they have the story um, in their hands and I'm confident that they're gonna do an amazing job and I, I hope that they are confident that I'll, I'll be able to put the words on the page onto the camera. Um, that having been said, I, what they do with my character, it feels, it feels right up my alley. It feels right up Jared's alley. You know what I mean? Like I, I love that, I love vacillating between, hey, I think I'm doing a, a good job. I know I'm trying my best. I know we're getting a lot of wins but focusing on the losses instead. And I think Sam has a, has a, um, a problem where he focuses on his failures. You know, if he, if he saves a million people but uh, fails at saving three, he's gonna focus on the three. And uh, the writers and producers um, have, have seen that that works for the character. And it's, it's kind of been part of the archetype all along. Um, I mean, it's the same as Luke Skywalker, Harry Potter. It, it's the Joseph Campbell mythology. Um, <laughs> And to have the protagonist who kind of more beats himself down as opposed to uh, uh, just fully uh, realizing his potential. So that having been said, Sam's fine. And I think he just is at a place with his brother where he bounces stuff off him and vice versa. Uh, so I'm excited to keep exploring it. And we see Sam kind of go to, uh, to the nth degree this season and really uh, give it all he's got to, to try and make the world a better place. And for me, that's exciting. When we started the season, Dean was kind of, had no faith, was a little bit down. Sam was kind of keeping him up. Are we in a bit of a role reversal at this point in the season? Um, well, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's, and in, in that I think is one of the things that this show does very well is uh, this kind of uh, ever-evolving motivation uh, between the two characters. You know, I mean, go back all the way to season Season one, when Dean was kind of the, the driving force of wanting to find dad and Sam, be, Sam being reluctant and not wanting to get into the life. And then, and then it switches in season two where, you know, now dad's gone and Dean's kind of given up and Sam's like motivated now and he wants to find him. So <clears throat> that's been, that's been a, 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 you know, a, from, our, from the Supernatural playbook since the beginning. And I think we continue to, to do that because it, it works. Uh, but yes, there has... You know, Dean was, was certainly out of sorts in the beginning. Uh, there was a lot of loss in his life, and he was just, you know, he's kind of, he was at a loss. And he didn't quite know which road to take and, and, and how to get there and, and what to do when he got there. And so, uh, luckily, he's not going it alone, and he has his brother to, to help, to help uh, pick him up when he's down. Um, and, I, and as the season progresses and, and you know, they start, they start getting wins, uh, then... <laughs> he starts to get his confidence back, he starts to get his motivation back, and he starts to get, uh, um, you know, kind of excited about what the game plan is. And as we get close to the end of the season here, uh, we, we'll, we'll see Dean kind of step up in a big way. And I think, it, I think again, yeah. I think again, kudos, kudos to the to the people writing these scripts and driving this uh, ship, um, captaining the ship. It, it, it mirrors life so much. We've had the opportunity with Supernatural. It's been so unique. With this season, we end at 287 episodes, so we have you know 200 plus hours of storylines, and <clears throat> life is cyclical. And sometimes 
you're there for your friend or family member or whatever, sometimes they're there for you and it goes round and round and round. And I, and I see a lot of familiar faces that have been with us for many, many years, some for all 13 years, some for uh, a more brief amount of time, but uh, no less excited. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a great, in this weird, bizarre, fantastical, supernatural world, where, you know, sometimes you end up animated with Scooby Friggin' Doo. Um, <laughs> you still get to see, it, 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 it mirrors life, and sometimes, sometimes, you, sometimes you're the support, and sometimes you're the one being supported. As a wise man once said, sometimes oh you eat the bar, and sometimes the bar eats you. <laughs> I like that it, it Mirrors Life came after. Sometimes you're animated. <laughs> it mirrors life. That was a, well, that was a non sequitur. That was a bit right. of a tangent. Yeah. He's animated every day, <laughs> yeah. all the time. All the time. I'm just a hologram. Which Winchester gives the better pep talks? Ooh. <laughs> fight, fight! <laughs> I think we've all, I think we've all seen Dean uh, give his great heart speech. <laughs> which, 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 he then, stole from Braveheart. He didn't think of it. <laughs> that doesn't can't matter. Quote a film. Still motivating. <laughs> Once Morris has reached your friends. <laughs> Is that Bill Shakespeare over that's, there? That's Billy Shakespeare. Know. Take off my glasses. <laughs> in, the, in the writer's room, we think it's Mary. So. <laughs> we, we <don't> know. <laughs> I was gonna keep going on which Winchester, but now I'm a little scared. Yeah. Of, yeah. of what Full happens. Liar. Which Winchester's better? No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, looking back on the show, for the writers, it's kind of about like drafts and idea that gave you trouble. For the actors, it's about like a scene or a story. What do you think has been like the most takes you guys have ever done in any given scene of Supernatural? And or for the writers, something that you've had kind of like the most trouble with? whether it's a scene or a story or a joke or... <laughs> wow, apparently no trouble. Yeah. It's all easy. perfect. Uh, it's easy. I, I can tell you how they contribute. This is sort of... Um, you won't get this on every show. I was directing an episode, I can't remember which one it was, where we just about get ready to shoot a scene with Jaron Jensen, and they came in and said, this doesn't feel right. We think Jared should have Jensen's line and Jensen should have Jared's line. And I went, really, now? <laughs> <laughs> Bob's like, in all my years. <laughs> um, and I said, okay, read it. And they did. And I went, you guys are absolutely right. And they just switched parts. So they're so in tune with, with their characters and, and, and how they feel mm -hmm. that um, it, it kind of makes it easy for us because if they know, you know, generally we know, except when we wrote it wrong and they said, no, we're going to switch this. <laughs> um, it's a test. So it's, I, I, I think there's kind of a symbiotic uh, relationship yeah. with the actors and, 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 and us in the writer's room. Um, <laughs> And having done a lot of shows uh, prior to this, I can tell you that uh, these guys are as easy to work with. Um, when they have a problem, they come to you in a respectful manner and say, you know, we think of maybe this, and it's the same way on the set. Uh, they're both really camera savvy. They both have great ideas about how a scene might be blocked. And as a director, if you just, you know, don't get so locked into what your plan is and be able to listen to them, generally, those scenes turn out better because of their input. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. It is, we are, especially with, with guys like Bob, it, it, there's a cool, I don't know who first said this on set, but the, the phrase, best idea wins, it's sort of the lack of ego, and the director has this idea, the camera operator has that idea, the, the actors have this idea, and then when they all spout their ideas, even though the director is captaining the ship, if the director's like, oh, if it's Bob or wh whomever it is, they'll say, wow, yeah, that works, great. And there's no like, well, uh, no, uh, 
uh, I didn't, you know, there's no sort of ego, like, ah, I didn't, I didn't want it that way. Or I wrote, you say won't, not will not, or whatever it is. Um, that having said, to that extent, I think the most takes I recall doing off the top of my head is um, just because the timing had to work perfectly in the 50-50 is uh, 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 Sam Winchester keeps a ruler by the side of his bed every morning when he wakes up. <laughs> because we had to say it at the same time. So it was one of those moments where Sam has been through this day and mystery spot over and over and over again. And so he and I had to say it the exact same time, exact same inflection. And so it just took... It, I don't know if we... I don't know what the lines are. Uh, it is... Only if Misha does his accent. <laughs> yeah. I remember the, the scene for me that was the most takes for me was, uh, it was My Bloody Valentine. And, uh, and good movie. It, really good. <laughs> great movie. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I, Cass walked up to the table wearing a, um, an autop, what is it called? A, a quarters? Morgue? Morgue. Um, and, uh, a mortuary? <laughs> Pipe down. Um, I walked up to the table and I was delivering my, you know, cast dialogue. Blah, 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 and uh, and Jared and Jensen are on the other side of this uh, stainless steel table. And uh, every time I walked up, uh, Jared had a broom handle in my crotch. And <laughs> and I was just I was just laughing. And so the I, I could I I'm not he good was at giggling. He I wasn't was giggling. Laughing. I was giddy. Um, <laughs> So, and I'm not good at not laughing. <laughs> right, Bob? <laughs> not good at that. It's not one of my strengths. Uh, so finally, the first AD took the broom handle away from him. Um, and, then, and then Jared continued. I was delivering my dialogue. Blah, 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 blah. Jared continued to be, you know, foot. annoying. <laughs> he had a foot. And he was making faces. And then finally, Jensen it was like a friend on the set <laughs> said, hey man, don't deliver the dialogue to him, just say it to me. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> and so I said my lines, I walked up to the stainless steel table, I said my line rah, 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 to Jensen, and Jensen went. <laughs> So many takes, so many takes. Teamwork. <laughs> okay, I have, a, I have a question from our Facebook Live feed. We're live on the Facebooks. Who's live? I mean, we are. What? We're live. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, Lindsay Ann Beard would like to know, is there a famous haunted location that you would like to see in a future episode? There you go. Uh, <laughs> there are two for me. Uh, Winchester Mystery House would be awesome. And there's one that I consistently forget the name of, but it's supposed to be the most haunted place in America. It's like a hotel in Colorado. Stanley, the Stanley. The Stan yeah, the Stanley. Yeah, that's supposed to be. I want to go stay there. It's going to be <laughs> scary. Is it, is it? I didn't stay, but I've been. And? It was traumatizing. No. It was really Stanley scary. Stanley and Winchester. Yeah. Well, that's true too. Gorgeous and traumatizing. The gor the gorgeous. The gorgeous what? No, the Stanley is gorgeous. Gor oh, it's gorgeous. It's, it's a beautiful building. The gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. So those two. Anybody else have a famous location? Maui. <laughs> <laughs> Known to be haunted. <laughs> yeah. Lots of ghosts. Got to be some ghosts in Maui. <laughs> That's boat. <crazy. laughs> a haunted boat. A baby boat. <laughs> Jensen only speaks in one word. For <laughs> the rest of the panel. <laughs> All right. Now is the time for you all to ask your questions. We're gonna throw it out to you. We'll bring the lights up, raise your hand. I will call on you, you will get a mic. All right, let's go right here. How many people are here? I have no idea. Yep, right here. You're heading the right direction. Wow, this is very popular. Yeah, that's a lot, it goes up. Oh, 
Hi, guys. Hi. So, I was wondering, what's the difference between preparing yourself for an actual episode and something like this? It was an actual episode. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are y'all not going to air it? No. <laughs> Do you mean this, mean this or this? Do you mean the episode, Scooby? Are you talking about okay. being on stage? Yeah. Voiceovers. Okay. Acting out. Okay, for a minute there, I thought it was a good question. Um, <laughs> just kidding, Abby. Just kidding. <laughs> Abby's a friend. I can say that. Abby's a um, friend. I was like, you just roasted this girl. I, <laughs> <laughs> say hi to Abby. Hi, Abby. Um, I don't. I mean, yeah, it was just wildly different. However, we, there's there's been many wildly different episodes of Supernatural in the past that, you know, he and I read and we're like, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Like, what what's? Um, and I think at the end of the day, uh, at least for me, I always feel like if I can just stay true to who Dean is, then you can put that character anywhere. Um, Miss, you know, mystery spot. You can put uh, uh, changing channels, um, French mistake, uh, Scooby Natural, um, any of those like crazy, wacky episodes where it goes to a different world. I always think that if I can just stay true to who this character truly is, then wherever you put me, I will be him. Yeah, for me, my preparation was the exact same. Um, the, the filming of it was different, obviously, but uh, same thing. And I, I recall, and this made me laugh because this morning, so we don't live in Los Angeles, so I'm staying in a hotel, and I got up to get on the treadmill, read my script, and I turned it on. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn, and there's a little TV on the, on the treadmill, and I'm flipping through the channels, and I get to TNT, and it's French Mistake. <laughs> and so... So I'm trying very hard to kind of surreptitiously watch it while no one sees that I'm watching myself on a treadmill. <laughs> Every time I, somebody's walking behind me, I'm like, oh, where's CNN? <laughs> uh, Mueller in Russia. I'm just, I don't know, the, the, the machines. Um, so, uh, but I was laughing knowing that today we were talking about Scooby Natural, which in, in I mean, what a crazy episode to do, right? Uh, but my preparation was the same, and I, my point being, when we heard about French Mistake, our whole edict was sort of, you know what, as long as I play Sam Winchester and he plays Dean Winchester, it'll work and we won't feel like we've jumped the shark. So even if they call us Jensen Ackles and Jared Padalecki, as long as we're Sam and Dean reacting to that, then oh, no, the, we still the story... felt like we jumped the shark. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. Yeah. Um, so yeah, years, for years me it's ago. been the same. They just forgot to tell Good us. Good question, Abby. <laughs> All right, I, let's I go we... double horns. Sure. Hi. Um, three things. One, I love your ring. I'm a big ring wearer myself. Okay. Two, um, the show is so amazing. It reminds me of Stephen King novel. It's a well-told story. I'm excited to get the, to the end, but I don't want to get to the end because then it'll be over. So, and three, yes, uh, truth or dare. Spoken, Misha. Truth or dare? <laughs> and I feel like it should be a dare. No. I mean, obviously, dare. dare is dare. The dare. That was a bad mistake. <laughs> um, will you thumb wrestle me? <laughs> I knew it. As soon as he got up, I was like, microphone, microphone.
That was that, that was masterful from us. All right, that let's was awesome. do I was like, oh, the God. red shirt right behind you, sir. If you look to your right, yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, I um, see that at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to know what you love most about doing this show, all of you, because obviously you've done it a long time. There's something that's holding you there. What is it? Could be Ooh. any of you. That's a good question. It's a great question. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Alex, what's what's been keeping yeah. you here for? <laughs> <laughs> and don't say yourself, okay? <laughs> Let's, let's keep um, for me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bob, you, you Bob, should probably yeah. take this. Yeah, one. for me, Jared and Jensen said they would kill me if I left. So. That's true. <laughs> very, very, very true. It's more yeah. self-preservation yeah. than anything. You also else. weren't supposed to tell anybody that, Bob. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we made him an offer he couldn't refuse. No. <laughs> um, you know, I, there's many reasons uh, that that I still sure. yeah. truly enjoy doing this show and and working with these people, and uh, it is it, it's. It's become something that I never anticipated. Uh, when this show first started, I, I was like, man, this, is, this, is, this has got a, a real good shot of like going a couple of seasons. <laughs> <laughs> and that was huge. Uh, it is huge. So to, to be up here on the stage talking to you guys after you know, 13 years, it's, um, I, I don't know what the recipe is, but whatever it is, uh, I, I will, I'm, I'm happy to have found it and these people, keep me going to work and I'm, I love going to work. I just had a birthday party up there and there was, there was, uh, my wife threw me a, a, a surprise party and, and the whole crew and, and cast, not only present but from the past too, ha showed up and it was, it was those people that keep me fighting every day and getting up and, and doing what I love. So. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. Um, that, and we get, to, we get to tell a story I think we really care about. And I, I think as much as you guys love Supernatural and uh, uh, Jack and Mish and Sam and Dean, we love Sam and Dean too, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't want to see Sam die any more than y'all want to see Sam die, so. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm excited to keep telling the story. Thanks, good question. <laughs> All right, let's go to glass, the guy in the glasses way far over here. We're going to go to the edge, because that's where I like to live. That's where the show is. <laughs> Danger's my middle name. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. So my wife got me into this show. I didn't, I didn't, th <laughs> that's her. I didn't think it was something, it was a show that I would like personally, but she got me into it, and the one thing that really stuck to me was a relationship between you two as brothers. I have, yeah. I have three brothers myself, two older, one younger, and I've heard over the, the course of the show, you guys have gotten really close, but the thing that stuck to me was how early on you both came across as brothers, as friends, as at times you guys just couldn't stand being around each other, and as <clears throat> having personal experience with my own brothers where I don't want to be around them. I don't want to talk to them. Eventually we come back. We, we find that bond that brings us back together as family. And the fact that you guys have come across as real brothers from the get-go is one thing that really, like I said, stuck to me. So how did, how, how did that come across with you guys? How did that chemistry come so early where you literally come across as two people? If I never saw the show, oh, yeah, they're brothers. I, I totally see that because my oldest brother is a lot like Dean. He's uh, hard-headed. He knows what he knows. He's going to tell you what he's going to tell you. And <laughs> it is what it is. And as, as, as Dean Sam a lot in many instances with my, older, my, my oldest brother, it's, uh, like I said, it came across extremely genuine. And the writers can give you all the words and the best scripts to read, but you two really got that across. And how did that come up? And how do you guys keep that going 13 years later? Thanks, man. <clears throat> Uh, great question. Welcome to the family. Thanks, wife. Um, uh, super cool. I, I, I again, to, to, to parrot something he said a, mo a moment ago, I wish I had the recipe. I think the basics were, um, you're not, 
you're not going to do it without without the right words. You know, I, um, you can write, uh, you can have De Niro and Pacino read an awful script, and they can't make anything happen. So we had the raw material to work with, um, and then I think we just got each other. We were both really grateful to to be in the position we were in. We were both willing to work hard, put in the extra hours. Young and hungry. And Young and hungry, and just, <laughs> I mean it. Like, it was one of those, you, you know, you're not going to work me too hard. 16-hour day, fine. Uh, you got to fly there, fine. He and I both were just there, committed to the script. We loved the characters. We we trusted the writers, and we and we went for it, you know? I mean, we we... We didn't hold back, we went for it, both personally. We also have a lot in common just on the paper, you know, from where we grew up to who our football team is, to we both have older brothers and younger sisters and our family kind of raised us similarly. Our parents still are married to and they live in the homes and the areas we grew up in. And so we had a lot of raw material just literally on the page that we had a lot to, to share, a lot in common. You know, we talk about the Cowboys. We, we had stuff to bond over. It wasn't like, and I've done movies and projects where the producers and the studio will send you to a location a week ahead of filming, two weeks ahead of filming, to have you all hobnob, you know? Like, well, we're going to have them do dinners together, and they'll be friends, and then it'll come across on screen. And that feels very uh, uh, falsified and fake. And um, this just kind of happened naturally. It was like, well, hey, it's only 5 p.m. Cowboys are playing tonight. You want to go watch it? I'm going to watch it anyways. Sure. You know, so it became one of these natural bonding experiences. And um, There's a moment, too, that, that we can't overlook, and that, that's it's a moment that happened, I believe, episode two uh, of the, the show. We were, we were filming. It was uh, Wendigo. We were filming out in uh, Stanley Park, and uh, Eric Kripke uh, uh, yeah. sat the two of us down, and he said, guys, I can't impress upon you how important this is. And he pointed to the two of us and said, this relationship is crucial to the success of this show. And the show lives and dies with you. And it lives and dies with you. And you need to understand that, that you are now shouldering that responsibility. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were young guys at that time. And I think it, it really hit us hard. I know those words still resonate to, with me today. And the fact that he sat us down and had that conversation. I'm older than, I'm older now than he was then. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> So he was giving us a pep talk, and he, was, he wasn't much older than us. And that, that pep talk, I think, has sustained us for quite a while. And it just, he and I instantly grew up in that moment and said, you know what? We're going to have to be super adults about this. And we can be children later when Misha joins the show. <laughs> That's what he said. How but you two, you two also do... In, in the real world, love each other like brothers. I mean, you, you spend a lot of time together and you're good friends and you have, and you've actually spent the bulk now of your adult lives together, believe it or not. <laughs> you've actually literally grown up together, I'm yep. sorry to say that, and infected one another with each other's personalities. Mm. Um, I mean, it's really depressing. It's sad. <laughs> it is. Uh. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it didn't help to, it didn't, it didn't hurt to, to legitimately care about everybody on this stage, frankly. But, um, yeah, I think a mutual trust, you know, yeah. When it works, it works. When it works, it works. Thanks, buddy. All right, guys, they're actually telling me to wrap it up. So we have got, we'll do one final question here, right here. Go for it. Um, so a lot of questions have been towards Jared and Jensen. I actually want to ask for, for Misha. Oh, hi, I'm Sarah, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm a really big fan. Um, I'm just, I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget it. But you guys were talking about how, um, Jared and Jensen, you guys talked about how staying true to your character is the most essential part of um, playing a role on TV. But Misha, your character especially, I know everyone has different variations, but your character has been through a bunch of different changes. You've played... Jimmy Novak, Leviathan cast, Cassifer, um, Big Empty cast. How do you prepare for each version of your role, and how does that preparation differ from your normal variation, like your normal preparation as Cass? <laughs> Sorry, it's long. <laughs> in, in one sentence, please. Okay, so you play all these different things, yeah. right? How do those um, different versions, how does your preparation vary from yeah. just playing normal yeah, cats? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure he gets it. Can you, can you use smaller words? <laughs> how 
<laughs> How do you pretend to be different? <laughs> Lots of cats. <laughs> Lots oh, of cast. Yay! Well, I'm a Winchester. It, 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 it's sort of, um, it's, it depends on, on the character. I think there have been times when, I mean, there really have been many iterations of Castiel over the last 10 years. Um, there have been times when I showed up on set uh, feeling really lost and really at sea and not sure, like crazy cast for me. Um, ben Edlin was directing. Um, and, I rem and he wrote the episode where Crazy Cass appeared first. And I remember showing up on set and I had an idea and I did one take on camera and he said, uh, try, try again, but do, do the opposite of what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and that was how we discovered that character. It, was, it felt very um, seat of the pants. Which, um, which one was Crazy Cass? Crazy Cass was Crazy Cass. I, <laughs> I'd love to sit down and watch the show with you sometime. Um, <laughs> is that like Crazed TL? Crazed TL. But for instance, the big empty cast, I spent a great deal of time on an oil rig in the mid Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> honing that dialect. <laughs> You're still seeking counseling. <laughs> Um, I, think, I think often there's a little thread that, that, that you pull, you see something and you think, oh, you know what, I'm going to follow that thread and see where, where it takes us. Um, I think a lot of, um, yeah, I think a lot of the best things in art come from that. Um, Castiel now, getting into the Castiel character, for me largely is just about um, slouching. <laughs> That's all it takes. I just have to hunch over and I'm cast. That's it. I love the so. idea that somewhere in the in the on an oil rig in the mid-Atlantic, somebody's <laughs> watching Supernatural is like, wait a second. I don't remember him. He I don't, he's, he sounds like one of us. <laughs>�����������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������